some questions. Here. Ah, so if technological innovation is a solution to all challenges, then how to deal with climate change and terrorism? Um, first of all, I would never say that technological change alone is the solution to all of our challenges. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to be clear. I do believe, though, that we are not going to make progress on our toughest challenges without really good technologies. We need better tools. Now, my point is, we have much, much better tools. So how are we going to make progress on these two terrible challenges of climate change and terrorism? Uh, Bill Gates has a wonderful way to talk about the climate change problem that we, had, that we have. He says, in the 21st century, we need an energy miracle. And he says, we might just get one. And when you look at the declines in cost of solar power, and the increases in the ability of solar to deliver cost-effective energy. Again, just in the past couple years, the progress has been amazing. And in many parts of the world, the economically rational choice, the smart thing to do, if you didn't care at all about the planet, and if the price of carbon and the price of pollution was zero, you would still choose solar. It's the most cost-effective technology. That is only going to continue to be more and more true as we continue to scale up and innovate with these kinds of different energy technologies. So I agree with Bill Gates. We need an energy miracle. We might just get one. On terrorism, all I can say is that I believe that there are more good people than bad people in the world, and that the way to bring people along is to put the right ideas, the better ideas, in front of them. We have the best technologies ever for sharing knowledge, sharing ideas, and communicating with each other. I think the good ideas are going to outweigh the bad ideas. Now, I know that sounds a little unrealistic and a little naive. We need to be clear. The bad people have better tools than they have ever had before. And there, there are real worries associated with that. In general, I have more faith in the good people using tools and bringing along the conversation. That's how I think we're going to make progress on this terrible issue that's affected both France and America so deeply of terrorism. I think the next one is about bad people. Uh, what about using innovation for destruction? You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, it is only a matter of time before the bad people load up a drone full of explosives and fly it into something. It's going to happen. I wish we could keep the technologies out of the hands of the bad people. We can't 100%. The good news is that we are democratizing access to incredibly powerful technologies. The bad news is that we are democratizing access to incredibly powerful technologies. Again, I think there are more good people than bad people out there. I think our tools for understanding who the bad people are and dealing with them I think they're getting better. But in general, Francois, with that exception, I do not believe that innovation rhymes with destruction when it comes to our planet, for example. We're seeing our planet get better instead of worse over time. It, take, it took me a long time for that idea to sink in. It's very, very counterintuitive. But the more you look at the evidence, the more you realize, I think, that innovation rhymes with renovation, rhymes with healing. What would be the main effect on the economy? And I see we're just about out of time. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a, the, the, I don't know. This, that is, I find that an extremely interesting, a really tough question. What does the economy look like five years from now, 10 years from now, if this phenomenon of dematerialization continues? Wow. Like, that is a big question. What I don't, and I don't know the answer to it with any clarity. What I do know is if this phenomenon of dematerialization is real, then the things that become more valuable are ideas, our information, our software, our code, are things like the blockchain and all these technologies that Don talked about. These knowledge resources, these digital resources, become the really valuable ones, become the ones that you want to have inside your country 
inside your company. The old-fashioned resources of steel, agriculture, oil, things like that, it feels to me like those be might become steadily less valuable in a world that's dematerializing. But again, that's a, I think that's the huge economic question for the 21st century. We don't know the answer yet. It's too soon. Okay, if we consider that we buy stories, that does dematerialization means that we, we buy a new kind of story? Yes, yes, yes. We need, when, when, the, when the evidence changes, we need to change our stories. I think this is a wonderful question. This is really important. When the evidence changes, we have to change the way we look at the world, we have to change the stories that we believe, and we have to change the stories that we tell to each other. We're continuing to tell yourself the same old stories when the world changes, this is a recipe for being obsolete. We need to do a lot better than that. One more. Social networks have dematerialized social relationship. Will we end with only virtual friends? This is what I call um, um, the grumpy old person question. Do you know what I mean? Whenever a new technology comes around, there's a wonderful Twitter account that you should all follow. It's called the Pessimist's Archive. And what this person does is go back and find people worrying about every previous innovation, every previous technology out there. So if you go back far enough, the printed word was going to destroy civilization. The book was going to destroy civilization. The telephone was going to destroy civilization and personal relationship. The television, okay, the television almost did destroy <laughs> But almost, we, like, my generation, we survived television. There is no more precise technology for destroying your brain and your ability to talk to another human being. There is no more perfectly designed technology than television. We survived that. Where are we now? Young people are writing more words than has ever been the case before. They look strange to all of us old people because they, they're, you know, they're abbreviations and they're smileys and they're things with that. But we are bringing a culture of writing back to people. So I agree, we always need discipline and these things, you know, these are very, very tempting. We've all seen families at a restaurant sitting around a dinner table going like this instead of talking to each other. Great, that's an easy problem to fix. Put your phones away for a while. But the idea that, that, these, that these social networks that are increasing our interconnectivity and making us write and communicate more, the idea that these are destroying our social relationships is nonsense. Did I say that clearly enough? Do I need to repeat myself? <laughs> we yes. have time for one more? Yes, but you know, uh, Andrew, we most of our talk are, are online, and we've got more and more people at, attending to yeah. the conference. So. If that were true, this room would be empty. Yeah. It's not what's happening. Business travel around the world is going up even more quickly than economic growth would predict. Mm. We have not walked away from the desire to be next to each other. It's just not happening. Don't believe the old story, tell a new story. Okay, last questions. Masters at Go Game used to say an elegant play is a master play. How is it possible to transpose to technology? It's, it's a wonderful question. While this match was going on in Korea, the computer made a couple moves that nobody understood. And the, the humans who were commenting on the games said, I have never seen that before. I don't understand why anyone would do that. It turns out, that was actually a beautiful move. And as the game progressed, it became clear why that move actually was a really brilliant move. What the people who built that system told me is that when they were training the system, they worked with some expert Go players. They said the players made the system better, the system made the players better, because it's teaching them different ways to think about what is an elegant play, what is a master play. That's the relationship that we should have with technology. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.